of excitement in the building today for our vacation Bible school that begins tonight. We're really, really excited about that. Uh, we sort of got kicked off in a, uh, uh, in a small way over in the annex earlier with combined classes for all the kids. And uh, we are super excited for Vacation Bible School to start tonight. We'll be studying Build Upon God's Word. And we're looking forward to several lessons. The kids will be rotating through the classrooms. The teenagers will be uh, together all week with Brian and Eric. And so we're really excited about all the great things that are going to go on for Vacation Bible School. If you are visiting with us today... We want you to know that you are an honored guest, and we hope and pray that you'll come back at every opportunity that you have. We love our visitors here at the Adairsville Church of Christ. Uh, we want you to come back at every opportunity. Uh, please pick up a newsletter from the foyer. If you didn't get one on the way in, there's a lot of information in there that might be uh, helpful to you. It's great to have uh, Nathan Woodring and his family visiting with us today. He'll be leading our singing, and our first song is number 977, so grab your songbooks and get ready to join in there. 977 will be our first song. Let's see, we also have a lengthy prayer list of folks that we need to be praying for, and so uh, you'll find a list of those in the newsletter. Let me uh, read off a few of their names. Uh, keep Sarah Medlock in your prayers. Uh, she was diagnosed yesterday with a compression fracture uh, in her uh, vertebrae, in her spinal column, and so that's a very painful injury. She's been dealing with pain uh, from that for quite a while. They're trying to figure out what to do about it, and so we will pray for Sarah that she gets uh, well quickly. Uh, it's good to see Brother Steve Hayes here after long absence because of his uh, ongoing illness. We pray that he continues to improve. Keep Sonny Parker in your prayers along with Sister Lynn, uh, Sandy DeRome, Valerie McCloy. It's good to see Valerie here today. Also, Joy Thacker. Joy is improving, and we're grateful for that. She looks good and is feeling a little better every day. Uh, Drew and Jack Suttles are going to be going on a mission trip uh, in July, and so keep that whole team in your prayers. By the way, I think Jonathan Jenkins has gone already in, into South America and is down there right now uh, preaching and teaching the Word of God. So keep all those missionaries uh, in your prayers. Uh, speaking of people who are traveling, Michael and Tina are back in Arkansas for a week, and so keep them uh, in your prayers as they're away from us and as they'll be traveling back. Uh, let's see, uh, Trey Hunt is also traveling for work right now. He's out in Arkansas, I think, for a couple of weeks at least, maybe three weeks. And so we'll keep Trey in our prayers too. Uh, Austin asked me to announce, and I'll try to remember to do it at the end too, that after the closing prayer today, uh, he'll be uh, up front with cards that we can send out for our, our evangelism program. So if you'd like to write a card or two and send it out to somebody that... Uh, you might make a difference in their lives. Just feel free to come forward uh, after the closing prayer, and Austin will give you one of those cards, and you can fill that out, and we'll mail it for you, or you can mail it yourself. Uh, let's see. I want to really recommend, if you have time, and I know you can make the time if you want to, to, uh, to, to uh, make the lap around the building and look at all the work that went into the classrooms that are so wonderfully decorated for Vacation Bible School, the Teachers and helpers have been up here for days and days getting ready for Vacation Bible School, so be sure to check that out. By the way, next Sunday is the last Sunday of the month, and so that will be our regular Church Eat Church Day. Uh, what that means is after our morning service, we'll go over to the annex and enjoy a potluck meal together, and then we'll have uh, a service over there in the afternoon as soon as we're done eating. And we won't have a 6 p.m. service next Sunday. We're, we're going to be doing that uh, every final Sunday of the month. And so we hope that you'll come back and be ready for that next Sunday. Remember, no 6 p.m. service. Uh, don't forget that we're going to kick off our Tuesday night summer series this year with our first annual uh, Tuesday night singing, area-wide singing, on July the 2nd, and we're really looking forward to that. It'll be here before we know it. And so uh, be sure to come out as we kick that off with our singing. And then for the next nine Tuesday nights, uh, we'll have a different speaker coming to talk to us about the fruit and spirit. We're really looking forward to that. By the way, since we have so many events planned for this summer, 
We uh, hope and pray that you'll bring in uh, a 12 pack of canned drinks or bottled water and bring it to the foyer and we'll move it out to the annex to be ready for all these events that we have going on. We do have several birthdays in the bulletin uh, this week, including today uh, Dylan Vanderplug and Virgil Story. Virgil's turning 87, and so uh, we're uh, prayerful for Virgil. Also, uh, Raymond Helton has got a big one coming up tomorrow. She'll be 80, and so we're excited for uh, Raven as well. Uh, we also have some anniversaries and uh, in the newsletter as well, and I'll let you uh, catch up on all that. I think that's everything I have right now. If you have other things you'd like to have announced, if you'll let me know, I'll be happy to do that uh, at the right time and run in the newsletter if I can. But now we'll turn it over to our song leader. In heavenly armor will enter the land. There's not a friend. 
Our song before the scripture reading and prayer will be number 587. 587. Just kidding, that's wrong. 527. 527. Let's all stand and sing this one. <coughs> As I travel through life with this trouble and strife, I have a glorious hope to give cheer on the way. Soon my toil will be o'er, and I'll rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful. Congregation of people here in Adairsville, we pray for our leaders, for Rick, for Mike and Brian, for the deacons here in Adairsville, that they would always look to you for guidance, that you would bless your church in Adairsville, that you bless us spiritually, that we would grow in your word. We also pray that we could grow in numbers, that we might be better servants in your kingdom and be able to do more to spread your word in our community. We pray for those who are sick among us, that they would not suffer, that they could come home soon. We pray also for the lost, Father. We pray that they would hear your word and obey it and come to you. 
We ask that you be with us each and every day, Lord. We pray that you bless this community and this country and her leaders, that you watch over us and guide us and keep us from temptation. We thank you for your son. It's in his most holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm before the Lord's Supper will be number 452. Sing all three verses of this one as well. starting in verse 62. This is, this is as Jesus faces this, this trial. And the high priest arose and said to him, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But Jesus kept silent, and the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, It is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of witnesses? Look, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered and said, He is deserving of death. Then they spat in his face and beat him, and others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? Jesus, of course, was deserving of all glory. Jesus would go up to sit at the right hand of God, but he had to endure all of this and so much more. This ridicule, this disrespect that he did not deserve. I think fairly often about Matthew 27, verse 54. After Jesus has died on the cross... Verse 54 says, So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. 
That's after the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom and after the earthquake and the rocks were split and graves opened where the bodies of many saints were raised. How sad is it that it was after all that Jesus had gone through that people started saying this was the Son of God. They started to realize who he was. How sad that it took all of that for them to realize that. I certainly hope that we all realize Jesus is the Son of God that Jesus sacrificed himself for all of us. And we need to do our best to remember him as he has asked us to do. As we take this bread and this cup representing his body and, the, and his blood, we need to remember his death and his sacrifice. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father, we thank you right now for this bread representing your son's body. We're thankful that... <clears throat> He was willing to sacrifice himself on the cross for us. We know that we are not perfect. and He is the only perfect sacrifice that ever could have been. We're thankful, thankful for the, all that he did and all that he was and he is and the hope that we have in him. We ask that you would bless this bread and help us to truly remember now. It's in his name we pray. Amen. pray for the fruit of the vine. Dear Father, as we partake now of this that represents your son's blood that he shed for us, we ask that you would bless it and help us truly remember his sacrifice. As we've just sang, it was just darkness all around, but he was willing to give himself. He was willing to do your will, no matter how painful it would be, no matter all that he would have to suffer. And we thank you for that, Father, that he was willing to do that. Please help us. Help us in our minds as we remember your son's death now as we take this representing his blood. It's in his name we pray. Amen. concludes the Lord's <laughs> Supper. Another part of worship is giving. That's another command we have. If you have not given already today, there's a plate in the foyer that you're, you'll be able to give as you head out. Let's pray for this part of worship. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings you've given us. We know that we would have nothing without you. We would not be here. You have given us everything that we need. Father, we know that if we are faithful to you and follow your son's example truly, that we, that we will be blessed and we will never be in need of anything. You've given us a church family. You've given us the opportunity to work and to do things that will help, <clears throat> help us to care for our families. And Father, as we give, help us to do so cheerfully. Help us to have the right kind of attitude in every way. Help us to be truly making a sacrifice, knowing that we owe you everything anyway, Father. We cannot possibly give back enough to repay you except to give us to give of ourselves to give everything we have uh, to be dedicated to you in our lives father please continue with us as we continue to worship you 
Help us to have our Bibles open and our minds ready to learn. And as we sing, help us to sing joyfully as we teach one another and learn about you. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings you've given, most of all for your son and his sacrifice and all that it means for us eternally. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mark in your books, number 255. Yes, 255. 255, that'll be the song of encouragement. Song for the lesson will be 523. Theme song, some would say. Let's all stand again. 523, we'll sing. Oh, let's sing awful. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tempted skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with His great mind. There is a God. There is a God. He is alive. He is alive. In Him we live. In Him we live. here in this congregation. Uh, I'm seeing that more as I travel travel around, seeing more and more congregations. 
uh, that have a good mix of ages and a lot of uh, younger folks that are part of the congregation. I have traveled around at times in the Brotherhood and looked out and just saw a sea of gray hair. And so, uh, you know, old folks got to worship somewhere too. And so I'm thankful that uh, everybody worships God who is, but I'm also thankful that we have lots of young people, very talented and faithful young people. Uh, having been here uh, over 11 years, I've seen a lot of the, the younger people that we have serving in the Lord's Church here. I've seen them grow and mature in the faith, and what a great blessing that is. I'm so thankful that we have everyone that we do here. This morning, since we're going to kick off Vacation Bible School later today, I thought, you know what, why don't we just dedicate a sermon toward the young people? Because all of us can benefit from learning these things. You know, the Bible says that we have to preach the whole counsel of God. And one of the great challenges of being a gospel preacher is making sure that my preaching is balanced in the proper way. Now that can mean lots of things depending on how you look at it. Sometimes being balanced means focusing on the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Sometimes it means focusing on encouraging the brethren, and sometimes it means warning the brethren. Sometimes it means preaching to the older folks, and sometimes it means preaching to the younger folks. And so today, I want, if you are a young person, I want you to listen especially hard in this lesson today because there are lots of lessons that I want to teach for you. God often uses young people to accomplish great things in this world. And youth should never be seen as a limitation of what you can do, but rather as an opportunity that you ought to be thankful for. Amen. You know, uh, youthful, youthful Christians bring a lot of things to, uh, to the table when it comes to uh, a congregation of the Lord's people. We're going to talk about that uh, as we study. First of all, let me just throw a few names out for you when it comes to great young people that the Bible tells us about in its pages. Number one, think about the young boy David who would later become king over Israel. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 17, David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. David went on to say that he, he destroyed that lion and that bear. He fought off those wild animals to protect the flock that his father gave him to watch. Now he was saying all that to the king because he wanted to go down and fight against the giant Goliath. And everybody else was afraid to fight that giant. He had been marching out on the battlefield and challenging all the soldiers of Israel, saying, come out here and fight me if you're brave enough, and we don't have to have a war. We can just settle this one-on-one. -on -one. Whoever wins, then uh, the other army will uh, admit defeat, and nobody from Israel would go out there and fight that big old giant. David was probably a teenager at this time. And the only reason he even came to the battlefield was to bring some food for his brothers. And when he saw that giant, he was overcome with duty toward God. And he said, if nobody else will go fight that giant, I'll go fight him. And they thought, there's no way you can beat that giant. And he said, I killed a lion and I killed a bear. I kept the sheep faithful. Now God wants me to guard his sheep. And I'll go out there and beat that giant. And you know what he did? He did exactly what he said he was going to do. God helped him. And so David's youth did not stand in the way. All those older soldiers out there were afraid. But it took a young person to be brave enough to go do what God wanted done. I'm thankful David had that kind of bravery. Another young man in the Old Testament was named Joseph. The Bible says in Genesis 37, verse number 2, that Joseph was 17 years old and he was feeding the flock with his brethren. You know, Joseph, although he was a young man, went on to do great things. Now, it wasn't always smooth for him. You know, when he told his brothers about the dreams that he had, 
They started hating him and looking for an opportunity to get rid of him. And so when he went out to uh, when he went out to check on his brothers, they cooked up a scheme to murder him. Finally, one of the the oldest brother talked them out of it, and instead of killing him, they threw him in a pit, probably an old well that had dried up. And they said, he can't get out of that well, and so we'll just throw him in the well. And uh, Reuben came back later to try to get him out of the well, but some, some people had come along and got him out of the pit and sold him into slavery before, uh, before he was able to be brought to safety. And so... He had to go through some hard times, but when he got to Egypt and was sold by those slave traders to the Egyptians, he remained faithful to God and rose up through the ranks and became second in the land of Egypt only under Pharaoh himself. And God was the one that blessed him every step of the way. But he couldn't have been blessed by God if he wasn't faithful despite his young age. And so Joseph never looked at his age as something to hinder him from serving God. Instead, it's a great opportunity. Somebody says, well, what about in the New Testament? Were there any young people in the New Testament that God used to do great things? You bet there were. I think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, the Bible doesn't really tell us, but most Bible students think that she was a teenager when she was chosen by God to, to become the mother of Jesus. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 30 says, The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. See, it really doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. God wants to use you to bring about His will. He chose Mary to bring Jesus into this world. G uh, Mary was the one who, along with Joseph, parented Jesus and brought him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord so that he could go about his mission in saving the world by giving himself as a sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Who knows what would have happened if Mary wouldn't have been faithful enough to serve when called upon by God. And so whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you're young or old, None of that really matters to God as long as you're faithful and will do what God wants you to do. You know, we could go on and on with this list. We could talk about Daniel and his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known as uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel and about their faithfulness. Our kids will be studying about that this week. Young people who serve God where they were who did what God wanted them to do, and who were a blessing in the sight of God. Let me tell you God's view about you. Number one, God says, don't let people look down upon you just because you're young. 1 Timothy 4, verse number 12, the Bible says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Timothy was a young man when Paul was telling him this through the inspiration of the Spirit. And God said, let no man despise or hate or look down on the fact that you're a young person. If you're a young person and you want to preach the Word of God like Timothy did, you can do it. Young men, you can go out there and, and be a gospel preacher. Young ladies, you can go out there and marry a gospel preacher. And you can be a great service uh, in the kingdom of God. You know, when I went to preaching school, some of the very best preachers were young men that came right out of high school and went to the Memphis School of Preaching. Some of them had never stood in front of a crowd before, and then they got to the Memphis School of Preaching, and they had to stand up in front of their classmates and instructors and deliver their very first sermon. I can't imagine what that would be like. I'd preached for several years before I went to school, and I was on up in age. I wasn't a young man when I went through. And so uh, young people can do so much. Uh, they can be such servants in the sight of God. They can't let their youth stand in the way. The fact is there's great strength in youth. There's great strength in youth. 
Proverbs 20 and verse number 29 says, The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. And so uh, the glory of the youth is how strong they are, how much energy have they have, how much enthusiasm they can bring to the world. And so this week, that's one of the things we want to see in Vacation Bible School is these young people engage and participate with enthusiasm of youth. Sometimes we think, as older folks that watch the, uh, the energy that these young people think, uh, have, we say, man, I can get tired just watching them. Oh, what if we could bottle that energy and have a little of it? We'd probably give us a heart attack. But these young people know how to handle that kind of youthful enthusiasm and energy, uh, don't they? And so we need, to, uh, we need to look at the blessings of youth. Uh, serve God from the time that you're a young person. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, verse number 1, Brian read it to us earlier, Remember now thy Creator from the days of thy youth, when the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. There'll be a time when you get so old, you almost dread every day, and it's aches and pains that come. You had to sit on the side of the bed and warm up like an old 1950 Buick before you can get out of bed. Young people, their, their eyes pop open. They hit the ground running. Well, that's, that's what it means to have that youthful enthusiasm. But don't forget, young people, remember God. Remember your Creator from the days of your youth. That way you won't waste any time. You know, I, I wasn't converted to the church until... Uh, I was in my 20s. I think I wasted time as a young person not being faithful to God. I didn't know about God. I didn't know about the Bible because I didn't have the opportunity as a young person to learn about it. But you do because you're here. You're here. You have a Christian family who loves you, who's going to bring you up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and that means you don't have to waste any time. You can serve God from the time of your youth. And what a great blessing that is. There is power in youth. We talked already about energy and enthusiasm. 1 John 2 and verse number 14. The Bible says, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. And so John recognized the, the power of youth. You know, also, a lot of times with youth comes sort of an innocence with which you look toward the world. And young people, I hope you never lose that innocence. It's easy if, if you give in to the devil. But I'm reminded of what Jesus said when he saw young people all around him and some people were trying to keep the children away from him because maybe they thought Jesus is too busy to worry about these kids. And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Jesus wants you close to Him. He wants you to live a faithful life. He wants you to keep that youthful uh, innocence that you have uh, when you're a young person. Another thing about youth that gives you a lot of power is the fact that you have such power to learn. You're like a sponge. You know, when you're as old as me, it's hard to learn new things, but little children, they pick things up so quickly. They're watching and learning all the time. Not just when we think we're teaching them, but all the time they're looking at the example that we set before them and they're soaking it all in. You couldn't stop a young person from learning if you wanted to because they're learning all the time. The Bible tells us in Psalm 119 and verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. You know, young people need to pay attention to their teachers. Young people need to listen and soak it all in while they're young because right now you are, you are like a sponge. You're learning and adapting and growing so fast in the faith, and what a great blessing that is. I'm thankful for these strengths of youth. But you know what? There are also some challenges that you're going to face as a young person. Number one, young people face temptations. Sometimes temptations that we never had when I was your age. 
The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 22, Flee youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. There are some temptations that seem to especially affect young people. Now, they don't, we're not immune to them as we grow older, but there are some things that really put pressure on young people. I think about things like peer pressure. When all of your friends in school are telling you to act a certain way or think a certain way or dress a certain way or talk a certain way, and as a young person you really want to fit in and you don't want to be ostracized or looked at as strange, well, let me tell you something, Christian young people, it's okay for people to think you're strange. People think we're strange as older Christians when we don't go out there and act like the world. We have to stand up for what we believe in. You know, sometimes one of the challenges that you face is you just don't have enough experience. That's one reason you need to really listen to your, to your parents, to your grandparents, to your elders, to your preacher, because we know things that you don't know. Not because we're smarter than you, just because we've lived long enough to see those things before. Sometimes over and over and over again. And we know how things might turn out when you don't because you've never been through that experience before. You know, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, uh, if, if I were to paraphrase Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 14 for young people, it would be something like this. Joshua didn't have the experience yet to lead the children of Israel, but God was going to be with him. Uh, and so we need to have our senses exercised like Joshua worked and learned and prospered so that he could do the job God wanted him to do and we have to do that too. I remember when, Je when God <coughs> called Jeremiah to be one of his spokesmen. That's what prophets were. They were people who spoke up for God when nobody else would. And when God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. I'm a child. Don't let that stand in your way. Jeremiah didn't let that stand in his way. God said, you don't worry about your age. When I'm with you, it doesn't matter how old you are. You just say what I want you to say. You just say my words. And if the people won't listen, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And so you just do what God wants you to do. I want to give you some encouragement as we close out this sermon this morning. As a young person, God can use you. God can use you. He will. He'll use all of us that will let, it, that will let Him use us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse number 27, the Bible says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. You notice how we have highlighted certain young people that God chose to do His will throughout God's Word? If we were in charge of picking somebody, we might pick somebody older or more experienced or somebody who was more polished. But God says, give me Daniel. Give me the boy David. Give me Joseph. Give me Mary. I can work with these young people and we can get the job done. Amen. As long as you're on God's side, you don't have to worry about how young you are. What you have to do, though, is you have to be willing to seek wisdom as a young person. Proverbs 16, verse number 16, the Bible says, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? Gold and silver, that's what a lot of people in this world are chasing. They're working overtime and staying gone from their families and uh, worried about what they're going to buy next so they can keep up with their neighbors. God says, you don't worry about material things. You gain wisdom, spiritual wisdom. That's the most important thing in life. You trust in God. You trust in His Word. You trust in His plan for you. God's got a plan for you. He wants you to grow up and obey the gospel and be strong and faithful all of your life so that you can have a tremendous impact on the world around you 
and win many souls for his kingdom. God says in Jeremiah 29 and verse number 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Some translations say, I know the plan that I've planned for you. God knows everything. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. There's a goal in mind. We just have to keep our eyes fixed on the prize. Young people, even though you're just getting started in your life, I want you to keep your eyes fixed on heaven. You keep your thoughts centered on God and your eyes fixed on the prize of heaven because that's the way that we really get through this life and be pleasing in the sight of God. Young people, you have a unique power to change this world. With faith, with wisdom, with knowledge from God's Word, you can accomplish great things. Nobody will be able to stand in your way when you're on God's side. And the church, the congregation here included, needs to embrace the power of youth because it's so important, both now and in the days ahead. Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 14, Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Young people, in many ways, those of us who are older ought to try to be like you. Because Jesus says, of such is the kingdom of heaven. I appreciate you young people. I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate all you're going to do this week in learning about uh, God and about these stories building up upon God's word in our vacation Bible school. And I just want to say thank you for all you do in the church today and all that you'll be doing in the days, months, years, and decades ahead as you remain faithful to God. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, we would plead with you to become a child of God through obedience to the gospel plan of salvation. That means hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. If you want to know more about that plan, we'll be happy to study with you and make sure that you know exactly what you need to do in order to become a child of God. And if you're here as a Christian, you've already obeyed the gospel, but you realize there's sin in your life standing between you and God, now's the time to come back through repentance and prayer. And if we can do anything to help you, I hope that you'll let us know right now. As together we stand and as we say. I am resolved no longer to be here.
uh, part of our vacation Bible school as well. I think that's all that I have. Sure, yeah, 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 we love that. We're going to have a closing song, and Archie's going to help us out with that, and then we'll have our closing prayer. Turn to nine zero eight.